and I've even sent him a copy myself this day. And uh, he's expected in court on the 22nd, and he's going to have to explain this bullshit, excuse my French, to the judge. And if he doesn't make him, his case uh, clear, he's going to have a temporary restraint or a permanent restraining order placed on him so that we won't continue to receive stupid emails degrading us and actually even threatening our lives. So, yeah, I mean, this is the way it has to be. I wish that, you know, I wish that we had more time to explain to people what really went on. There's a lot of people out there that think, you know, they're thinking that we're mudslinging or we're... Yeah, it's not about mudslinging. This is about the truth that shall set us free and how do we get to where we are now and where are we going are we going to continue to degenerate as a species? Is our planet going to be continually uh, poisoned by those who have such low uh, consciousness and esteem for themselves and love in their hearts for creation? Th- that is the issue. And, you know, again, you can look at the basic understanding that there is Um, an element of evil in the world, or let's say there's an element of aggression in the world. Uh, In the book of 528, you'll see there's 741 hertz frequency that is in dissonance to love. And that's by nature. It's the only one of nine notes that is not in harmony with 528 love. So it's interesting. It makes you understand the power of choice that you have to choose between good and evil. And there are people out there that are the squeaky wheels out there that bring aliases to this kind of battle so that when, you know, the issue is debated on the Internet, it looks like there's a whole army of people who are uh, opposing goodness and love and in six or, or more aliases each. And I also want to point out, like, I got an email today from someone who said, oh, well, you know, Dr. Horowitz, you're, you know, losing your reputation because look what this person wrote. And it was Ken Adachi from, uh, yeah, from Educate it. Yourself. And he's one of them. We published one, that was actually the media person for Ted Gunderson. He, he goes out and he promotes everything for Ted Gunderson. So it's the same people saying it. It's yeah. the same people spreading this bad yeah. misinformation. And, and so these guys, I mean, really, it's over. They have been royally exposed. They are royally exposed. And beyond being royally exposed, you've got we've got to listen to the voice of we the people. They've, they've voiced their opposition to hearing about this issue anymore. They don't like being degraded, they don't like listening to degrading, demeaning, and intellectually undermining stupid issues, such as whether or not Horowitz was ever a knight in any organization. They're not interested in that. They're not interested in whether Sherry has big boobs. They're not interested in sexually demeaning discussion. And bravo. Bravo. I applaud the consensus that voted with their hands and with their mouths at the conspiracy conference. And there was about 500 people in the room when Sherry and I lectured. There was about, I'd say, about 300 people there that voted when we had this uh, debate on Sunday evening, uh, the so-called debate. And so I completely agree. And for my person, I, too, am done with this issue And we're going to move on. We're going to start to pump out a lot of wonderful things with 528 Love. We have the remedy. We have the number one solution that shall set humanity free. We now have love in a pure tone that you can listen to, you can celebrate, you can vibrate, you can turn your water into, you can structure your water, you can drink it, you can bathe in it, you can bring dolphins in incredible healing sessions like they're doing in Israel right now. And if you haven't seen it, check it out. We sent out a newsletter a couple months ago that talks about what they're doing in Israel in the Sea of Galilee with bowls that are tuned to 528 and then bringing people for healings into the water, attracting incredibly dolphins that join in the musical healing session 
absolutely incredible photography. If you, if you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. And that is really where those of us who wish to choose love, we should be focusing. And so I want to thank all of the people all over, all over all these years who have said, Len, you know, you really uh, shouldn't get sucked in to this dark side. And I always said, you know what, if I hadn't gotten into the dark side of vaccines, we wouldn't have saved millions of families and children. But, you know, I have to say at this point, I don't know how much time we all have left on this planet. There's a lot of people who are saying things that there's going to be some strange astronomical events happening between now and the 21st of December of not this year, but next year. And so the question becomes, how do we prepare energetically, spiritually for meeting our maker if that's what the case is going to be? Yeah. And uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm totally into love as being the solution. You know, again, I think, Sherry, I know that you agree. We've had lots of discussions about this, you know, and I mentioned uh, the fact that I love you greatly for all the work that you do and the, how you came to my aid in exposing these beasts that were attacking me. And, and I love you also because of the love that you have demonstrated for the animals. I mean, uh, folks, I don't know if you know this, but Sherry used to work uh, for the San Diego Wildlife Refuge. And in the history of that organization, she was the only person that the giraffes who hate humans, the only person in the history of the San Diego Zoo that the giraffes enjoyed having her feed them. And she's got photographs of them kissing her. And I've witnessed that every animal I've ever seen, just like this is kind of like St. Francis reincarnated. So I, I know this concept of what love is when you're when you love and you're in love. There's nothing more powerful for a healing anointing than that. And that's, I think, the love that we all need to engage in order to get into a space whereby the spiritual energetics and the polarity changes that are, that are predicted. And again, many of us are feeling these things happening. There's certainly a spiritual renaissance happening. There is an increase in synchronicities. Prayers are manifesting more commonly. I'm telling you folks, I'm praying all the time. And I'm not praying out of fear. I'm praying out of faith. And look at where faith is located in your whole body. It's in your heart. Look at where love is. It's in your heart. Look at where joy is. It's in your heart. And look at where bravery is to go up against any problem or any beast. It's in your heart. Bravery's brave heart. So you've got this concept of 528 being the key to the house of David that opens doors to your heart that no man can close, closes doors that no man can open. Spiritual portals are those things that men cannot open or close. They're spiritual portals. And if you can open the portal of love, connecting your heart to God's heart, then there's nothing. As you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you don't have to fear anything because you're in harmony with divinity. And if the creator is with you, then who or what can stand against you? Nothing. No one. Nada. There's no enemy in that space that has any power. Because the light dispels the darkness. The music of love, the music of the light, eliminates the music of the night. And that's literally the transition period. And then, again, that's why I celebrate the outcome of this weekend's events at ConCon. Because, to me, the people have voted. And Len Horowitz got it loud and clear. It's about sustaining ourselves with intelligence, looking at what the remedies and the solutions are, and we've got them, particularly in 528 love music and the whole 528 love revolution. I think also for us it was a huge spiritual battle that we had to deal with. I was really, really tired. Afterwards I felt like 
I, you know, you know, and it's like you, you know, even if you have this love in your heart and you can go out and you can say, even the worst people in the world, I just have to love them. I felt we had to really expose them. We had to bring it the truth to the light because without that, this would continue to go on. The, this truth movement, the conspiracy movement is all a lie. It's all based on government control. It's the reason why there was only four to 500 people there since the conspiracy conference was started. It's because they do not allow it to go beyond that. It's really super controlled. This is where they control everybody. It starts at the activist movement to come in there. And if they can keep the people under, you know, uh, under control, so their voices don't get loud enough. And if their voices happen to get loud, then what they'll go and do is they'll send all this stuff that discredits them all over the internet to try to bring them down so yeah. they don't go very yeah, far. So, I wanna, so then you're a quack and I wanna, you're not considered anybody that's yeah. real or anybody that's true or they can't believe anything you say. And so this is what we exposed. It was a lot for people to handle. A lot of people didn't want to handle it. They were in denial about it. And it was something that would had to be done. I'm getting hate mail. I know that you're getting hate mail. <laughs> I mean, getting, you're also getting a lot of love mail. Yes, a lot of I am. Too. I'm getting a you lot know. of thanks, a lot of hate mail. But, I mean, that's part of it. I mean, the people that are sending the hate mail are people that have no ears to hear. Or they're, they're, involved well, they're involved in it because to, to be sending us hate mail or death threats as we do this magnificent work in these revelations. All we say is research it yourself. Don't believe us. We give you all the information and you got to go out and do your own research now. But rather than doing your own research, they'd rather come and, and just like say, how dare you say that about uh, my friend so-and-so. You know, uh, but so I, I just want to also um, publicly uh, acknowledge the success of Dr. Truat, of Ted Gunderson, of Anthony Hilder, of Craig Oxley, of Greg Zemanski, of Greg Zemanski and of uh, Eric John Phelps and Ken Adachi, uh, and a few and others. Don Nikoloff. Y you know, mm -hmm. uh, Don Nikoloff, I would say um, Alex Jones certainly gets an accolade also. You guys have done a fantastic job in making us believe in this big boogeyman of the Illuminati, which there is, and making us believe uh, that the banksters are behind the world's worst problems, which they are, making us uh, aware that there is a satanic sex trafficking ring out there that is hideously killing and manipulating and sexually abusing uh, 50,000 at minimum children annually from America alone. You guys did that. Well, thank you. You're great for doing that. But the reality is we now see you for who you are and what you're doing. And so God bless you guys. You want to keep sounding like idiots, doing your thing for the paycheck for the federal government, CIA and the NSA that have assigned you to create all of this dissonance and attack us, uh, our belief and our faith in the government of the United States and the uh, people who are engaging us and doing it to mix us up and confuse all the issues. And, and then, telling everybody and, that I'm stupid so you can then, discredit me because they know that I'm the one. As soon as I came along. Yeah, well, Sherry, Sherry came. Of course, Sherry, I would never, ever, and they know it because they've been attacking Sherry far more than they've been attacking me. So Sherry is really the one who exclusively did this incredible investigation of literally pulling the veil that has covered over the entire conspiracy industry. We now see it for what it is. I just researched who was attacking you. That was all. I know, I know. That was all I did was look at who was attacking you. If they hadn't attacked you, I wouldn't have researched them, and I'm sure they'd be still out there doing their same old dirty deeds. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. Sherry, you know, there's a lot of people who also are writing you thank you letters, and you've got me as one. I'm a, I'm a great, great, great fan of yours. Well, and thank uh, you. and I And ser sincerely, uh, I know that they set me up for an assassination plot, and I know that with your work, uh, it has helped tremendously to shed the light on it. And so, literally, you may have already saved my life for all I know. And so, again, I want to publicly thank you. Uh, and again, all you guys out there who I used to be really good buddies with, Anthony Hilder, you know, and Ted Gunderson, 
You sure had me fool, bros. I'm saying it honestly. And uh, basically, uh, I'm done dealing with you guys. This is the last program I pray I'll ever talk about this. And, uh, again, we'll focus back on all of the wonderful things. The five steps for miraculous healing. Making sure that, number one, you're getting rid of the toxins because of the chemtrail sprays and the poisonings in the water and the food in the air. Those are the health tips that we've got on HealthyWorldStore.com. Also, I laid out my five-step program in the book Healing Celebrations, Miraculous Recoveries Through Ancient Scripture, Natural Medicine, and Modern Science.